resignation is the most powerful way I know to read to connect you to, to the, the, the extreme horror of the fear of the human condition, right? Because what happens to children, see, we don't come in living in Plato's cave. We're actually born outside it, innocent and free. And, and, and then this world isn't ideal, is it? We instinctively, we, we, we imagine it, might, it should be. And, and so there's something massively wrong about it. So gradually, when children about in their late, you know, the naughty nines and stuff, they're, they're in a sort of flailing out at the imperfections of life and the world. And, but around 12, something very significant happens. They, they, they sober up and realise, look, it's flailing out at, 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 at the, the frustration, being frustrated is not going to get me anywhere. I've just got to sit down and try and figure this out. I've got to try to understand um, why the world isn't perfect. Because if I can't understand it, I'm just going to get more and more distressed, clearly. So there's a huge change psychologically between childhood and adolescence. We actually change the name. We call them childhood, then we call it adolescence. You ever thought, wonder why that, that demarcation occurs? Because you change, a child is, has, you change from being a, a protesting, demonstrative, uh, naughty, um, extrovert uh, child to becoming a sober, deeply introspective, Adolescent, there's a big change, and even our schooling system recognises it. And you, you go from junior school to high school or senior school. That's in recognition that there's huge change. Now, what happens? So, at about 12, the child's brain starts to think more and more, tries to understand the imperfection of the world, right? And they, they keep thinking about it. And this thinking goes deeper and deeper. And they quickly learn that adults, for some reason, don't want to even talk about it. And they're all bouncing around and, you know, laughing and putting on this brave face and smiling and buying some new blue shoes and carrying on, right? So they quickly learn that the adult world's all fake and phony and, you know, they don't want to know about it. So they're on their own thinking about this horror. horror. And they're still thinking about it and they go sleep and And then when you get to around 14, the question starts to really deepen and get really serious because you start to confront not just the human condition without but the human condition within. You start trying to make sense of the the dark side of yourself, the, the angers and egocentricities and indifferences to others and frustrations and so on. And then when you try to face that, whether you are a worthwhile and meaningful person or not, because if, you, if you're really honest and you are all these things, full of all these um, angers and egocentricities and, and indifferences and, and, and angers and so on, then by inference, you know, you mustn't be a worthwhile person. And that's a terrifying conclusion to reach. And so at a certain point in this journey of trying to face down the issue of the human condition, it becomes unbearable. And that's this moment of resignation when they actually decide never to visit that corner again because it, it's just too... And that's uh, the Beatles song, Let It Be. Mother Mary, come to me. When, the, when you're overwhelmed, you know, in that dark corner, let it be. There will be an answer in the future, but not now. It's incredibly honest bit of writing. I think George Harrison might have written it. Normally it's John Lennon writes all the really profound stuff. It was George, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, let it be. Don't go there. Give, it, give up. Don't try to face that down. One day there will be an answer. And if you unpack that and board out into that, he's saying that one day there will be an understanding of the human condition and then you won't have to resign. Um, so is, is resignation like acceptance? It's acceptance of the world the way it is and that you're never going to make sense of it and if you try to, you'll just give yourself a, a mighty headache. As that girl said, I'm not going to go to that corner any again. Well, you know? that's an extreme, yeah, um, mm. reaction. Yeah. Um, but, so, but that's, that's why I, I gave those descriptions. One of you mentioned that that resignation was getting a bit long-winded, going with too many examples. But it's so important because it really, if you, if you allow yourself to immerse yourself in it, because everyone does, or nearly everyone, remember being there. I mean, we've got all these dishonest excuses for it. I mean, we all know that ch children get... I mean, parents can't deal with them anymore through those years, 13, 14, 15, because they're, they're just unreachable. In their room, listening to loud music, they're just headbanging there. And if you try to talk to them, they just bite your head off. And they're just... And everyone... The parents just learn to give up. The hormones don't help with... Well, that, Having the feelings well, and then yeah, that's what the, to do with the feelings. You know, that's what they traditionally, we've traditionally done. It's blamed it on, on a hormonal change that comes with puberty, right? 
call it the puberty blues, but it's, it's self-revealing. It says blues, that's depression. And, um, and, and we call it, like, everyone, a lot of people get glandular fever. And, and, it's so, and they blame that on hormonal. They say it, it's the kissing disease. It's, it's to do with puberty. Now, if you just think about that, this is sort of cave excuse. Remember I said in the cave, and uh, the snake analogy, oh, look, you know, people stood upright because they have to go through doorways. They've got all these bullshit explanations based on living in the cave of denial. And that's why humans became bipedal and upright. I mean, it's just rubbish. The, the real problem, they're not even going outside and trying to think truthfully about the world they live in. They're terrified of snakes, but they don't even know, they're not denying they're even scared of snakes. They've got all this bull, bullshit. So living in the cave, there's all these different theories, right? So cave dwellers have have got the art of bullshit, of denial, down pat. So they've got an excuse for everything. And, and they quickly br blame it on it, and then, just as your brain went to it, there's this hormonal upheaval. I'm not sort of thinking it as like an excuse, I'm just thinking as an added um, uh, obstacle. Yeah, okay. And, and, it, and obviously that, like your book, you're saying that, that at that age you do start, I guess, even I know that that was when I started to think about myself, my place in the world. Yes. It's not just the world revolves around me. Yes. And how I'm, am I going to affect the world? And so, but of you know, hormones do exist and puberty does exist. Yes. So having those already deeper thoughts yes, because of your age. If you think about it, really, if you, if you think about it, humans, uh, and we're... We've been going through puberty ever since we were animals. Yeah, animals. it doesn't stop. We're no, still... just wait a sec, just wait a sec. We've been going through puberty. It's one of the most ancient, you know, growing, becoming sexually mature that's ever happened. So we've had millions and millions of years to adjust to puberty. Eons, billions of years since we were bloody microbes. We were, you know, so the adjustments that are occurring, uh, so we've, we're, we're, we're well adjusted to, to puberty. If you get glandular fever, that, that means your whole immune system's got so run down it, it can't fight anymore, right, to get glandular fever. So that's a, some, you, you've got to be under f far more stress than what, what, uh, what puberty can, which is after all, as I said, something that's been going on in, in, our, in, in life you know, since we were microbes. And it's also the healthiest time of our life when you're most uh, vital and, and you're in the maximum growing period and, and clearly, um, this puberty blues, this depression, is not because to do with um, uh, puberty, hormonal upheaval, as you mentioned, Tabitha, but um, something far more serious, a psychological problem. And it's to do with resignation, which is a horrendous corner to go through. And, uh, and some of those chapters, like, I mean, Robert Cole's got the Pulitzer Prize for, for and he's a child psychologist, he's wrote that agonising little paragraph about kid going through and and he probably won the Pulitzer Prize I think because of that one paragraph it was just so incredibly honest and must have saved a lot of kids lives and and that and the book Catcher in the Rye um were any of you mentioned Catcher in the Rye or something the previous meeting I said that I wanted to that's to right yes, it, yeah. <laughs> and I was embarrassed I hadn't <laughs> yeah no it's it is an absolute classic mm. but I, did, I didn't get it when I read it like yeah. I, I was actually annoyed at why he was such a whinger. Yes. But reading what you sort of written about it, like I, I kind Suddenly of want to go it. back. I need. To, obviously, yeah. there was a fog. There was a. I'd, I'd already. I came in in one mind, and that stayed with me the whole way through. I did. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, it, it's cleverly it's a metaphor. You, you got to understand. We can't admit we're in denial and still maintain our denial. So how are you going to write about resignation? See, this book gets away with digging up all these truths because in chapter two it defends humans. It explains why we're, that we're actually the heroes of the story of life on Earth. We're not villains, worthless beings. So, and it, um, Brian Carlton said, you've got to give this book to adolescents before they resign, Jeremy. That's your natural audience because they're yeah, begging for these thinking. answers. It's almost too late to read this now. That's right. It's very hard. Um, but the world is owned by adults, so I've got to start with adults mm -hmm. as well. But it goes back to my previous question. How do you... I mean, it's interesting to hear your thoughts on this. Yeah. We, we are already in this um, 
you know, in this madness, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. And it, I, I understand your your issue. Yeah. How do you get people out of that to recognize it yeah. and become yeah. comfortable with yeah. it and yeah. absorb what's in the text? Yeah. Uh, and... I mean, it seems simple to, to go to adolescence, but of course this, no adolescent would, you know, would read, you know, I think part of the reason why I connected with it at times was because of some of those references which I'd come across in later life, which there's no way that I would have come across in adolescence. Yeah, yeah. But it is quite a conundrum. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, it's... <laughs> well, now you're immersed yourself in this while we're having this meeting. Yes. Okay. Yeah. See... Um, Catcher of the Rye is, is uh, he's written about resignation without really saying what's going on because you can't admit that it's happening without, because once you, if you admit that resignation happened, then you're admitting to being alive because once you're blocking out that issue, that's the great elephant in, 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 in existence, this, this, in our lives, this issue of the human condition, which we decide never to look at again, this fearful issue of why we aren't ideally behaved and so on. The imperfection, are we worthless or, worth, or not? We, we live in denial. And if you block that issue out, that is the great issue. So you're living in a very superficial state from there on. You're living a fraudulent, artificial, superficial, immensely fraudulent. You've denied the whole... And every and all your thinking is fraudulent from there on. I mean, the example I use in the book is like you say, oh, look, there's lovely autumn trees with leaves and stuff. Isn't it, isn't it beautiful? And then your brain thinks... You know, isn't it amazing how beautiful nature can be? And then your brain thinks, mm, I wonder why I'm not beautiful inside. You know, I'm full of all this angst and, you know, indifference. And and, and then you go, oh, no, I'm not going to go there. So any thinking will quickly take you into this issue of the human condition. So better off not think. So there's lots of quotes in there from... Oh, they're all Nobel laureates. They're all, and they all say, we don't want to think. Humans don't want to think. As uh, the Australian Rod Quantex said, thinking can get you into terrible downward spirals of doubt. So we end up don't want to think, we just want to stay on the surface because we know that if we start thinking, we'll start to encounter this problem in the human condition we don't want to go there. We've been there once and it, we got absolutely cooked and we're not going to go there again. So we're just on an absolute bender of escapism and we're just going to live on the meniscus. If, it, if a bucket's there and there's a meniscus on the top, that's about where we live because all of this is too confronting. That's why Plato, the greatest philosopher of all time, focused on this huge bit we're not looking at, underneath the meniscus, the bucket full of water, because that's what we do. We're living deep underground in this cave of denial. That's, we, that's how dishonest we are and artificial and superficial we are. Now, so adults don't want to go around who are resigned and say, look, yeah, this is what resignation is. You give up on trying to think truthfully and I'm a total fraud now and all my thinking is dishonest and don't trust me at all. I mean, it, it just totally undermine your life. So again, that's a truth we couldn't admit until we could defend the human condition, first explain the human condition, and then and only then it does it become safe to unlock and admit all these fearfully and these previously off-limits subjects of resignation. 